Hello, welcome to this message from the Norwich Alliance Church. This is Pastor Chuck Tyree, and I'm happy you've uh, joined me today. Uh, coming from my living room to uh, either your computer room or living room, wherever you're listening to this sermon. Thanks for joining us. Uh, let's ask God to give us insight and wisdom into uh, the issue of uh, good pride and a kind of pride that is self-destructive. Let's pray. Father, uh, as a culture, we're very confused about the idea of self-worth. Uh, some of us think that any kind of self-worth is good, and actually uh, some of it is quite destructive. Uh, there are other kinds of self-worth uh, that are based on your word and the fact that we're created in your image and loved by a holy God um, that are actually valuable and priceless and uh, should be part of our self-image. I ask, Father, that you'd help us to have discernment today uh, to understand the difference between a kind of pride that will actually destroy our lives and destroy our culture and a, a kind that comes from uh, a gift that you've given us, a gift of grace, uh, being valuable because you value us infinitely. And I thank you, Father, that we are loved by you and pray that uh, you give us insight into this truth today in Christ's name. Well, we're looking at Jeremiah chapter 13, uh, the whole chapter, all 27 verses, and uh, this idea that pride leads to destruction. In America, in the West, and in, in culture uh, in particular, we have elevated uh, pride to a kind of super virtue. And we have uh, taken humility which is something God has said is extremely valuable to us and to our culture and, and to the world. Uh, and we've turned that into either not a virtue at all or a second class one at best. Well, what's the difference? Um, I believe the difference between uh, self-worth and self-importance uh, would really help us to uh, make that distinction. For example, we uh, look at the air, the athlete standing uh, on the top dais uh, at the end of the competition, the, the race car driver in the winner's circle, uh, uh, the team holding the trophy above their head. And uh, we glorify that and we say that's the pinnacle of success and, and uh, uh, great people don't finish second. Uh, for example, all of those things uh, shout that about self-importance. We're not saying that it took uh, a dozen coaches and trainers and uh, parents who made uh, big sacrifices. Uh, uh, a whole group of people uh, put that person uh, in the winner's circle. Uh, they didn't get there by themselves, but uh, standing there and uh, with my hand above my head and, and uh, proclaiming to the world that I'm number one, uh, that's self-importance. And that's actually destructive. It's not something to be proud of, but something that uh, we probably should be uh, ashamed of. We point to the CEO who uh, got his company to the, to the top of the uh, chart when it came to their stock exchange values. Or uh, we point to uh, the victorious uh, general. But we need to ask the question, how did we achieve these victories? And, and are they really even victories? Uh, are they victories for everyone or just uh, selfish, self-centered celebrations? Well, uh, God has a word for us, and it's a, a word that he gives us in Jeremiah uh, in this chapter. The problem with the sin of pride is that it's destructive. It, it destroys everything and everyone it touches. Uh, from uh, the individual, to the family, to the community, and the country. I realize how kind God has been to me, Paul said in Romans. Uh, with, and so I tell each of you not to think of yourself more highly than you should. Use good sense and measure yourself by the amount of faith that God has given you. Romans uh, chapter 12, verses 3 and 4. So I'm not talking about having a good, godly self-image, but I am talking about believing uh, that your worth uh, comes from the idea that you are the most important person in the universe. Well, let's look at this first uh, point about pride. 
pride renders me useless to God. I was created uh, to love God, to glorify Him, uh, to enjoy life with Him, uh, not only through a lifetime, but into eternity. And my idea of self-important pride ruins that. Uh, Jeremiah said, I will, uh, at the insistence of God, I will use Babylonia to destroy the pride of the people of Judah and Jerusalem. The people of Judah are evil and stubborn. So instead of listening to me, they do whatever they want and even worship other gods. When I am finished with these people, they will be good for nothing, just like uh, this pair of shorts. I'll tell you about the pair of shorts in a moment. That's an object lesson that God used Jeremiah uh, to deliver. The people in Judah felt invincible. Uh, they felt that their ideas were the most important ideas in the world, and their desires were the most important desires. Um, their wishes were the most important wishes, and anyone who disagreed with them uh, was going to be unfriended, including God. Uh, they were that important in their own eyes. Now, Jeremiah was telling them that they were in trouble with God, and the whole time they were saying, hey, we don't need God, we've got this. Does that sound familiar uh, with 21st century culture today? A lot of people are saying, I, I don't need a crutch. I don't need God. I, I can do this myself. And, and they had their own alliances. Uh, the people of Judah decided they were going to go to Egypt and form an alliance that God told them never to form with people who worshipped other gods and idols. Uh, they were going to make a contract with them to defend them against uh, Babylon and Assyria. And the problem was, uh, if you read the history book, uh, Babylon uh, conquered Egypt and Judah and Assyria and the whole uh, Middle Eastern world at the time. So they made an alliance that was actually deadly in their own self-important pride. They said, we've got this. We don't need God to defend us. And they actually did. Well, God sent Jeremiah with another object lesson. If you were listening to the other sermons, you found that earlier in Jeremiah, God had him shave his head like someone in mourning. Uh, going to a funeral at that time. Uh, now he had him go out and buy, and I have to explain this because it's very culturally different. Uh, he had him buy an expensive pair of linen shorts. Now these linen shorts uh, at the time were like the most expensive garment. Uh, it was exclusive. Only kings and maybe the high priest could have a linen garment at that time. It was white and they didn't have uh, tide pods. Uh, they didn't have any way to wash laundry. Uh, keeping something white, white was impossible at that time. And so to have this garment, which was extravagantly expensive, um, God was saying that God, his people, uh, Judah, they were valuable to God. They were uh, so valuable as to, to be rare and exclusive. Uh, so that's the, the symbolism of this garment that uh, Jeremiah was told to purchase. And then he was told to wear it and wear it and never wash it. So the, the, the shorts got filthy. And then finally God said, listen, take those uh, down to a river and bury them in the mud. He did that. And then he came back uh, months later when God told him and to dig them up. And then he was to show these linen uh, shorts that that uh, had once been so precious and valuable and anyone would think about how important you were if you could wear a garment like this. And he showed this ruined garment to people and, and then he told them, these linen shorts are like you uh, when God looks at your life. Really valuable, unique to God. Uh, and yet, because of your sin and your self-importance, uh, because you... Uh, have ignored God and, and done all this on your own and without him, uh, you're now useless, as useless as this valuable garment is. To proudly believe that we can do whatever we want and, and make ourselves the most important thing in the universe uh, and still be useful to God is absolute uh, self-deception. God loves and values us, but our choices can make us useless to him. In Isaiah 64, it said, you are unfit to worship. Each of us, our good deeds is a, like a filthy rag. We dry up like leaves. Our sins are 
storms of uh, wind sweeping us away. It said in 2 Timothy that those who cleanse themselves from the latter uh, will be instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. God is important. He's more important than I am. God's ideas, God's values, God's morality is more important than my ideas and my values. God's idea of a good life is more important than mine. If my idea of self-worth is to be more important than God, I become useless to him. And by the way, uh, fairly useless to the people around me as well. Well, God had another point that he wanted uh, Jeremiah to make. Pride is addictive. Uh, we're fighting a lot of addictions these days in our culture and our society and, and frankly, uh, losing a war with the opioid addictions. Uh, listen to what the Lord said about the kind of pride that is self-importance rather than self-worth. Verses 13 and 14, God says, I'm going to fill with drunkenness all who live in this land, including the kings and who sit on David's throne, the priests, the prophets, and all those living in Jerusalem. I will smash them one against the other, parents and children alike, declares the Lord. Human ego is insatiable. Mine is, yours is. Uh, it's, it's something that we need to uh, get help from God to do battle with. There are books and seminars, uh, social media. Uh, everything's about self-worth these days and self-importance and, and uh, pride and how important you are and how uh, no idea on earth is as important as what you think and just follow your own heart is the most common advice you get in the culture. The issue is that this is um, addictive and deadly. Um, one of the most addictive things, for example, is uh, the person who's on social media and uh, constantly counting how many people liked what you posted. Uh, they take endless selfies so that uh, people tell them how good you look and how beautiful you are and how handsome you are and how strong you are. And we post all of our, our victories and, and heaven help anyone who uh, reigns on our little uh, victory parade. We, we unfriend them in a minute. We publish our successes and trumpet our victories and we're looking for some applause and we believe we deserve it. That's self-importance. That's intoxicating. Uh, that's something that if you have a need for that and, and you feel like your life is worthless unless you can get um, a thousand likes for something you did, um, you're missing the point. God is saying that we need to please him, and we can with his help. Isn't that amazing? God tells them that all the containers in the country need to be filled with, with this wine of self-important pride. And, and he's going to make them drink from this uh, because that's what they want to do. This is their desire. This will, like any addictive substance, blind them to their real condition. Uh, like people high on drugs or pot or uh, alcohol, they find themselves uh, kind of dumb, drunk, stupid. Uh, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, it says in 1 Corinthians 6, nor slanders, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Addiction is a huge spiritual problem. First it's a sin and then it becomes a sickness, a disease. Well, this self-reliant pride that you and I uh, indulge, uh, thinking that our ideas are the most important thing in the world and uh, our morals are the only ones everyone should uh, bow to, uh, people are really bullies these days about things that aren't even uh, right or wrong. It's just my opinion. We tend to think that our pride is harmless or even good, uh, like we think that getting buzzed at a party is okay. But it blinds us to the light and deafens us to hearing God's voice. Do you feel free, for example, to disagree with Jesus about 
heaven and hell, what he said about that. Or to dispute God's loving commands about what's sinful and what isn't. Well, that's arrogant and it's deadly. I'm saying to God that my ideas are better than his and more important than his. Jeremiah was told by God to accuse the elite, the, the presidents and the uh, congressmen of his day, the rulers, uh, the, the high priests, the religious leaders, uh, the, the pastors and, and uh, denominational leaders, kings, uh, and parents and children alike, that they were drunk with self-important independence. Indulging our pride uh, is, is numbing. It's blinding. You say, uh, this is in Revelation chapter 3, verse 17, God, uh, Jesus' indictment on a church. You say, I'm rich and I have acquired wealth and have no need of anything, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. That was Jesus' evaluation of the church. And yet they felt self-important. They were proud. They had self-worth, but they didn't accept the worth that God would give them if they uh, lived for and worshipped the true king. You know, the thing about God is he has an answer to addiction. He can redeem our pain and he can overcome it. Uh, the only thing addiction does is just to numb us to reality. Don't be drunk with wine, it says in Ephesians 5.18, but because uh, that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. God has an answer for you and me. And, and it's not uh, living uh, our proud choices out. Well, as we understand we have a choice that God's given us in Christ, uh, you and I need to understand uh, how dangerous our pride really is. So let's look at this third point. Pride destroys a man or a nation, verses 15 to 27. Uh, this is God's promise to Judah. If you do not listen, I will weep in secret because of your pride. My eyes will weep bitterly, overflowing with tears, because the Lord's flock will be taken captive. If you've ever prayed for someone whose life is locked in bondage to some addiction, uh, you should be praying with tears uh, in your eyes. The idea that, that we... Uh, struggle with this addiction we have to self-importance. Uh, it says in, in Proverbs 18.12 that pride leads to destruction, but humility leads to honor. And that's really what we're contrasting. Humility is not a bad self-image. Humility is actually a realistic self-image that accepts that I'm valuable because I'm valuable to God, uh, not because I'm more important than you, than you are, and certainly not because I'm better than any, anyone else but because God loves me and he loves everyone else as much as he loves me. So we should value one another because he values us. There are spiritual laws and that are just like the physical laws that govern the universe. There's the law of gravity. That's why we don't jump off the building without a parachute. Well, the, the spiritual law is that God has made us to see our position in the world and we're not number one. Uh, there's a wonderful thing on the internet uh, saying that I, I am second. If you want to listen to testimonies about people who put God and Christ first in their life, uh, you could go to I am second and, and listen to some of those testimonies. What do we mean by God's judgment? Well, God's judgment in this case is to give people what they demand. They're saying, I want to rule the world and uh, with my ideas. I want to live for my desires and don't care what God wants. I want to live by my own morals. Uh, ultimately, uh, if you insist on that, uh, God's judgment is he'll let you have what you demand. The trouble with being full of yourself is that you have no room in your life for God. The trouble with holding on to your own desires and wants and needs is your hands are filled and God can't give you all of the wonderful things that he would give you if your hands were empty and open. So the idea is that we cannot uh, save ourselves. Uh, we need to understand only God can change our nature and even our culture. So in verse 23, God asks them the question, can you ever change and do what's right? Can people change the color of their skin or a leopard remove its spots? If so, then maybe you can change and learn to do what is right. 
He's saying uh, in their addiction, uh, what the first step in, in AA's 12 steps uh, is a humble admission. It's humility. It's saying we've admitted that we're powerless over our addiction and that our lives have become unmanageable. Well, if you're going to overcome self-importance, uh, you'll have to admit that. Jeremiah says you can't see your false pride. You can't understand your choices because you're drunk, you're high on, on yourself and incapable of spiritual thought. Only God can help you. So it says in Romans 12, if I keep reading those verses in another translation, don't conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourselves with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. God will help you uh, have a good, healthy self-image that won't destroy you and those around you. Uh, but you have to ask him and come to him. Well, let me recap for you. Self-reliance, self-important pride makes me useless to God when I was created uh, to serve and bless him and other people. Second, pride, uh, self-important pride is addictive and, and blinds me uh, to the reality of where my self-worth is to come from. It's to come from God. And pride ultimately destroys everything I valued, my own life, my relationships, uh, my community, my family, the country uh, that I love. That is the truth of pride. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, deliver us from self-importance. We're not important because we think we are. We are not important because we say we are, no matter how loudly we say it. We're not important uh, because everyone likes it when we act self-important. Uh, we're important because you love us, because you created us in your image. We're important because you have a plan for our lives, uh, not because we have uh, self-actualized and can accomplish anything we want without you. That's not even true. Deliver us from arrogant self-importance into a life of humble dependence. We were created to live in fellowship and unity with you and you're to be God and we're to be uh, your followers. Grant this, Father, and deliver us from the, the kind of arrogance that's destroying us, I pray in Christ's name. Hey, you are invited to Norwich Alliance Church whenever you're ready to come back. Uh, a lot of you are getting uh, vaccinated, the ones who want to. Uh, we're wearing masks. We've uh, had wonderful attendance the last couple of Sundays. We're at 35 while week is Hill Road. There's our number, our email address. Contact us if you need anything. We love you, and we're here to love and serve you, uh, not ourselves. So uh, call us out and give us a try. Thanks for listening.